Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Borderwise and Excuse you? And welcome back to From the Depths and another From the Depths Most Wanted video. Now as you probably have guessed by the title of this video and by the craft we're staring at right now, those of you who know it will probably recognize it. Those of you who don't, this is actually the final boss of the entire game. The Scarlet Dawn herself. She's an expensive beast, and uh, this is the faction HQ for the final faction of the game. And you might be wondering, well, those of you who do not know about this craft will be asking, Borderwise, there's so many other craft between the start of the game and this one that you haven't covered yet. Why are you covering the Scarlet Dawn? And those of you who know From the Depths perhaps a little bit better are asking, Arguably a better question, which is, border-wise, why are you doing a Most Wanted on the Scarlet Dawn? It's an easy vessel. And the answer to the both questions is quite simple. I am doing a Most Wanted it because someone requested it. Ooh, just warped again. I feel sick. So, uh, by somebody called Kuno Scarlet some time ago. And, admittedly, you, this series is mostly intended for, like, really difficult craft, as in something that people have a lot of trouble with. But I'm open to requests as well, because what one person finds hard to deal with, another person is not going to find hard at all. It's just, I don't know, it's... This game is like that. Some people, like, are... I don't know, from in the campaign, for instance, like, people were kind of... More than a few people were kind of bemused that I was having trouble with the Onyx Watch of all factions because, well, they're one of the easier ones. Well, that's how it goes. Sometimes factions give you trouble. And so here is, so that's what the video is on today. It's on the Scarlet Dawn herself. She's quite good looking actually, and as ever, I'm happy to say that she looks pretty good in my fleet colors. It's really nice actually. So why would people be scared of this thing? Well, it's can you pl Okay, you must stop doing that. It is driving me crazy. I'm just going to quickly turn off that warp drive right now because it's pissing me off. What is this now? Whatever that is, it bothers me. Hopefully now it'll stop bloody warping whenever I don't... Okay, good, we haven't moved that far. Anyway, so... That's the first thing that uh, it makes this a pain in the ass. It has a warp drive, which um, is a tremendously irritating thing. And the Scarlet Dawn, in particular, are devils for using that kind of thing. It basically means the thing teleports every so often and completely throws off incoming shells and missiles and what have you. And screws with the detection systems of any craft that it's fighting. And the Scarlet, the Scarlet Dawn, I, I'm just going to call it, uh, I think I'm just going to call it the Dawn because it's a little bit confusing. There are other Scarlet Dawn craft, like in particular, Godly Thruster craft, like the Singularity, what's another one, there's the Singularity in particular, but there's others, just in this kind of category, which warp pretty much every few seconds, and so, and because they keep such a big distance, they tend to completely throw off any form of kinetic projectile, which means that even advanced cannons aren't very good at dealing with them. Which is a problem, because, uh, I don't know, I'd, I'd call it a balance issue, but, eh, anyway. Front of this has another of those already. And this thing has a warp, has a warp drive every few seconds. Let's go check out the ACBs, actually. Turn on this. And I have deleted the main part of it, just so the stupid thing doesn't warp around all the place. So, battery above 70%, activate warp drive. Every, just over a minute, it activates warp drive. Hostile missile closer than 175 meters, affects warp drive. Warp the warp drive of charging. So, this thing essentially warps away from incoming missiles and stuff like that. Very steady as well. And, uh, what's, uh, what is else is scary about it? So, it's hard to hit, it's got decent lasers. Let's go on this one, I'll show you how powerful this is. It's pretty damn powerful. So it's over 8,000 pulse damage with 80 armor penetration. 
and 0.5 in accuracy. So it's not the most accurate laser in the world, but still pretty accurate. And I believe, same for, yeah, wavefront adjuster, so it goes through shields. Does this one also happen? Yes, it does. Wavefront, what? Coder. Huh, okay, it's called a coder, not an adjuster. Whoops. So over here, and here's the combiner, similar, 8000, 88p. Split between two turrets is probably half of that once it actually starts rolling. And it has these guns on it. Over here, I believe, ah, accuracy is not set up, but it's got high explosive, and this is a, how big is this, a 300mm gun, this is a 146mm gun, it's, uh, again, it's little HE shells, and I believe over here we have a frag gun, so it's over here, 325mm, yeah, it's an Actually, no, it's a high explosive. I believe these are the frag guns over here. So, let's see. And, yes, I'm correct. So, it's got high explosive and it's got frag guns. And uh, big lasers, but that's about it, I believe. It doesn't have torpedoes, it doesn't have missiles, it doesn't have anything else. Uh, what else? Oh, it's got a little spinny thing up here. That's very nice. On a spin block as well, which is kind of cheaty because it means it can see straight through other things but it has one more munition border back here so that's kind of okay so so it's got uh, lasers it's got a uh, few guns it is quite well armored on the sides so you can see here one two three four layers of metal on the side here so in a broad side it's reasonably tough and it thins as it gets towards the tip but it's still up to three at the very minimum, uh, one, two, three layers of metal, except where these jet engines are, in which case it's just one layer, then the engine, and then another layer. On the tip, it is quite well armored as well. Actually, no, not, not really. Right in front of it, there's only two layers of metal. But that's still not bad. On the top as well, it's quite thick over here. It's one, two, three, four. And one, two, whoops, so here is just one layer. But overall, just if you are trying to aim for anything with aim point selection, so where is the ammo? The ammo is... No, that's the AI. The ammo is... Where is it? One, two, three, four. Ammunition is somewhere around here. Where'd it go? Here it is, okay. No, that's the hot stuff. Here's the ammo. Or some of the ammo. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6. I guess there's more ammo somewhere. Nope, there isn't. But around here, that's heavy armor. And it's got uh, quite a few layers of metal over here. So if you aim for this bit, you are going to be having to shoot through quite a lot of metal. Where's the rest of the ammunition? I was trying to find this like the last time. It's got lots of dedicated heli blades. I mean, mother of goodness. That is a lot of them. So, I believe. One, two, three. That, that's half the ammo. Where's the other half? Am I missing something? I can't find it. I give up. So. So it's well armored in uh, certain places. And that it's got a LAM system as well. You can see. Where is it? Where is it? It's got little, yeah, see, it's little lamps nodes around here. And trying to follow where the heck these things go is a little bit of a pain. It's got lots of RTGs as well, just to power its warp drive, which is one of the reasons why this is so expensive. It's over half a million material costs. So here, 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 where is this? Uh, yeah. Trying to find the lasers. I believe the lasers are uh, all over the place. Screw it. I think they're around here. I think that the LAM system and the actual uh, laser weapons share the same laser system, which probably isn't that efficient. I don't know. Someone who knows lasers better than me can probably poke around in here and say, tell you exactly what's what. But that's actually really all this thing has going for it. It has lasers, it has guns, it's got decent armor, 
It's uh, got a warp drive. Am I missing anything? That's basically it. Lambs, lasers, warp drive, guns, armor. That's basically it. This is an easy... This thing is classified as an easy craft for a reason. And there's a number of reasons for that. And first off, you will notice that this thing is mostly made of metal, but there's only the odd surge protector around. They really only get clustered. See, there's none around this weapon controller. There's really not many around like these laser things, which uh, I believe are... Uh, I think... Uh, do, 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 do. Okay, I think it's only the... Yeah, it's these ones, which uh, are susceptible, susceptible to EMP. Cavities. This one is not... But where is it? There's control blocks and such. Actually, are the warp drives vulnerable to EMP? Warp drive, warp rod. Nope, they are not done in by EMP. But this thing can get screwed with with EMP because it doesn't have that much EMP protection, and it doesn't like you can snipe off its uh, detection components with like decent EMP rounds. And if you just swarm this thing with missiles, it can't actually warp fast enough in order to deal with it well. So it is vulnerable to EMP, like a particle cannon will just tear this to pieces because it won't be able to dodge it and it won't be able to deal with the result. And uh, speaking of the warp rod, you'll notice that it runs along the bottom here, it's exposed on its underside. So if this thing gets shot at from underneath, be it with lasers or what have you, or just even advanced cannons. Um, I believe that uh, these aren't particularly tough. No, they're not. They're weaker than a single metal block. So you can essentially ruin its warp drive capability just by shooting it in its belly. And speaking of that, its armor is very weak in places, right? So here, it's multiple layers thick. Way over here, I believe. Hmm. Not as, th not as thin as I remember it, but on the underside, it's two layers of metal. Which, against some weapons, is decent enough, but against a lot of others, it's really not. And here, for instance, there is one layer of metal, and then there's the ammo. Which is admittedly protected by heavy armor, but there's other components as well. Like this electric engine right here. So if something high explosive hits here, it could take out this block and then kind of weed its way into the soft squish internals. And things like heat and hash, if they hit this thing, have an absolute field day because spaced armor is not something apparently that spacecraft are well known for because once you're through these many layers of metal, it's just, it's empty free space in here and just be shredded completely. So... And speaking of the, what's it, advanced cannon types, you'll note that when I went into here, it's, uh, it's high explosive, it's frag, and it's high explosive again. That's pretty much all this is armed with, which means that, okay, you can turn that off. Which means that uh, if you have double layered shields with a decent setup, you basically can't be hurt by this thing and if you also have smoke so decent shielding and smoke you like this thing can't hurt you at all really so because these are only basic shell types it doesn't have crazy things like disruptor rounds or hash or heat or he frag hybrid or something like that so honestly it's like it does do a, a fair amount of damage but it's not ridiculous amounts of damage it's nothing like some of the other Scarlet Dawn vessels, for instance. And this thing is also kind of slow for an airship. Form up and fly with fleet. So if we send it sailing back to where it's meant to be. See, it's picking up speed, picking up speed. It's quite sluggish. And because it doesn't warp that often, it tends to get killed kind of easily. It's going around... Eh, it's going faster than a surface vessel would. It's just... Is it gonna make it? Yep, it goes about 28 meters per second and it's still turning. 
So let's wait for her to straighten up and see how far she goes in a straight line. But it's like, it's under 30 meters per second, which means that uh, once the warp drive is down, this thing is not hard to hit at all. And the lamp system is nothing to write home about as well, I should mention. Like, if you're on the habit, as I am, of using smoke, you can shut down its lamp system pretty easily. And as for the laser itself, I mentioned these are quite inaccurate, and I haven't tested it thoroughly. If it shares the same laser system as the lamp system, it just means that both of them are gonna, like, drain effectiveness from each other, if they're using both. So if you want to weaken the lasers, you could potentially just spam missiles at this thing. And another thing I should mention is that because this thing has so many RTGs to power its batteries, its cost makes it look scary. Remember, it's half a million resources. Like, that shouldn't put you off too much, because uh, in terms of, like, I don't know, when it, when, at least when I see something on the campaign map and it's really expensive, I start to get the shivers. This shouldn't give you the shivers too much, because each one of these RTGs is 5,000 materials each, and it has lots of them. So it's kind of got an inflated cost. You can kind of see, just as she's going in a straight line, she's peaking out at about 27 meters per second, so... I don't know, so it's about, I guess, average airship speed, or a little bit slower. There's certainly much faster ones, certainly I would never build an airship that moves that slow. It just doesn't make sense to me. And, last but not least, you might have noticed me poking around in the middle of this thing. There are, there is a vital defensive ingredient missing, and that is shields. This, uh, this craft does not have any. It has no shields at all, which means that fast advanced cannon shells will have a field day with this thing. In fact, I am going to demonstrate that to you right now. I'm ditching myself in the ocean. And we're going to have something... Ah, we're going to have our old favorite. Something with fast advanced cannon shells. Trebuchet can probably handle this. Let's see... We're going to spawn in the Scarlet Dawn. Actually, no. No, 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 no. Destroy all vehicles. Easy. Installation. Scarlet Dawn. The fact that this craft spawns in the water as well does it absolutely no favors. So I'm going to about uh, one and a half k's away, spawn in a trebuchet, that rhymed, that was not deliberate, I assure you. Nator, Onyx Watch, ABC, no that's date, ABC, Trebushka. Not my team, just for giggles I'm going to put this on the Steel Sliders team because I like seeing faction craft and different paint schemes. This is not going to be a fair fight, I should mention. So no shields equals bad times. So she's already at 95% health. So fast advanced cannons, like what the trebuchet has, will make mincemeat of this. And see, you can even hit it with crabs. That lamb system is actually good enough to snipe a few trebuchet shells. Not enough. And the I don't think she even got to warp once because the warp line was broken. So yeah. If you can handle the an Onyx Watch trebuchet, you should be able to handle the Scarlet Dawn. It's not tremendously logical, but uh, logical enough. Let's turn off the UI. So see, even even crams can hit it. There she tried to walk, didn't work. Admittedly, like maybe the trebuchet isn't the best showcase for this because it is a scary, scary craft to beat. Well, this is in space combat, Scarlet Dawn. Down she comes. Just 
think that the Scarlet Dawn invasion would have been halted completely had a single trebuchet happened to be stationed right where they landed. team again. Flip me. Walk all the way back here. Crappy control room as well, I can't see anything. So here we are again. So how to kill it? Well, you can actually kill this thing with basically anything, so long as whatever you're using is fast enough to hit it. So, as you can see, even cram cannons can hit it. So, as I mentioned before, just... This thing has no shield, so you shoot pretty much even kinetic rounds you can kill this thing with. So, and for yourself, decent shields plus smoke render is good enough for defense. And APS is absolutely king. This is a frag and hash heaven because just penetration depth shells will just eat straight through this. Hash will tear up the insides, destroy the warp rods. Uh, but if you're worried about getting kinetic weapons to actually hit this thing, lasers and particle cannons are your best friend here because this thing isn't actually smoked very well. Or you'll note that most of the smoke is around here. It's protecting this part of the craft here, just the rear of the thing. Which means that uh, the ammo way over here, I believe, here it would be. I lost it again. So here, there's actually no smoke. Ah, here's the rest of the ammo. There's no smoke around here, which is interesting enough. So here, there's some smoke. Actually, there's a. I tell a lie. There's some smoke here. Not really any smoke here? The snooper. Where is all the stuff? Here, here, here. Smoke up here. There's some smoke up here. Actually, it's got a bit of smoke, never mind. So maybe lasers aren't the way to go, but uh, Particle Cannon will laugh at this completely. Can you stop warping, please? I mean, do I have to delete your warp button again? Yes, I will. I will do that, because stop it. Okay, so... Lasers with... I was gonna say lasers with scatting targeting would work, because only the rear is smoked, but honestly, it is actually quite well smoked, but essentially just... The way to kill this thing is to shoot it a lot. And I will demonstrate that again, because who like I love ending videos on explosions. I'm going to just demonstrate that this thing is not that hard to kill once you get the hang of it by throwing a cram vessel at it. So if they go over here, 1,500 meters away, I'm going to throw the skiller at it. Because uh, the skiller is armed almost completely with crams and uh, Usually against Scarlet Dawn craft, that is a death sentence because uh, crams don't really do well against warp craft, but uh, you'll see that the skiller can hack it just fine. I also mentioned that I've updated the skiller again, so uh, for those of you waiting for the next campaign episode, I have been tweaking it again. You might notice something different, please don't shoot yourself. There's the HE shells. Thing needs to get out of the water. So, as you can see right there, that first volley hit, and that never happens. See, the Scarlet Dawn's down 3% health as well, and the Skiller is literally a fifth of the cost of it. Time Fuses also have a field day with it. And you can see those guns are actually not powerful at all. Because most of them are flinging straight into the water. And the skiller is not well shielded, I should mention. It's not doing anything, really. The smoke has handled the lasers. I believe that the warp drive is already down. Yep, it is. So that exposed warp rod in the middle is just 
such a uh, hindrance from the Scarlet Door. See, it walks straight into more cramps just then, so... This thing doesn't warp often enough to actually be a problem. It's already at 80%, so... Honestly, it's not that hard to deal with. Just, if you're new to From the Depths, just have something that shoots at this thing fast and regularly. Make sure your detection system's up to snuff. And you should be okay. And for those of you who are From the Depths veterans and have killed the Scarlet Dawn a million times already, uh, just enjoy the pretty explosions, because I certainly am. And as you can see, that laser is inaccurate. It's wandering around all over the place. Hardly an issue. And with no shields is a bit of a bummer for this craft. You need better warp drives than that if you want to survive this. You almost walk backwards. Yeah, and that much armor doesn't really help you when uh, there's still bits to deal with. Pretty much all the guns here are done, and this one actually is stuck between the fins. So that's an issue right there. Lovely crabs. Don't be fooled, crabs still need a buff. And down to the water she goes again. It's quite an FTP ID system keeping this thing afloat, I should mention. almost dead. No worries. Don't worry. Be happy. Five hundred K, really. See that's the great thing about easy designs. They're really expensive, but uh one critical thing missing, and suddenly your ship is not so good. Goodness knows I've made enough craft like that. Oh yeah, in case you're wondering, if you're up against the Great Talons or Scarlet Dawn, don't get rid of your torpedoes, their craft do sink once they're in the water. As you can probably tell right now. Hello, well there's a hole. It is so satisfying just to utterly crush something like this. It really is. Well, I guess I've beaten the Scarlet Dawn. I guess I, I guess I win the game now. So, I hope that was helpful for those of you having trouble with uh, with craft like this. I hope this was helpful. This is not the scariest warp craft in the game. I should mention that. In fact, I'm going to show you the one craft that I'm probably going to take years to get around to killing, and that's this one. This is the actual final boss of the game. The Singularity, which is way over there. And watch it mold the Skiller completely. Admittedly, uh, it is even more expensive than the Scarlet Dawn, but it's got big lasers, and uh, you will never hit it with cram cannons. Never. And it's got big guns. Wow, can't even hear anything. That's quite eerie. Let's uh, let's have a look at this. If the skiller actually wins, I'm gonna cry. It's not going to, but uh, you never know. How far away are we now? Almost three thousand meters away. So this is actually what uh, you should be scared of in the Scarlet Dawn. See, that's why you should be scared of it. Because it warps every... what? Two seconds? Yeah, that. That is what you should be scared of. And so, having uh, put the... Uh, uh, I hope you have sweet dreams tonight having seen that, uh, people who are still not experienced with this game. Thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And I will see you next time in From the Depths. Farewell!